uh, you, you talked quite a bit about um, nonprofit boards that, well, I think it's either on one end of the spectrum or the other, right? It's usually they're paying attention, they're involved, arguably over-involved, and like you said, <laughs> crossing that line of yeah. management. And I'd, I'd yeah. love to talk a little bit more um, about that. I know that yeah. that's an area for most people um, right. and, and really kind of a distinction. And we're going to talk which I think kind of dovetails into my next question for you around the CEO role and the right. difference between a CEO role and the board role, because I found that yes. in my experience, a board member is usually, or a collective board, so a board member, um, it's either one extreme or the other. They're, they're overly involved or they're not involved. In so <laughs> yeah. let's talk about the CEO role, because I think this dovetails nicely into this, right? Yeah, so it, the board and CEO relationship is, is mm -hmm. a game changer for, for most nonprofits. And yeah. sometimes you mm -hmm. can see that go sour because of those issues, right? So right. could you talk just a little bit more about that? Absolutely. It starts with dysfunctional recruitment. So it's, I find that most boards over the 40 years I've been involved in this, look for board members who are at arm's reach away and whom they're comfortable with, right? And so mm -hmm. the boards often look for business acumen. Well, if you don't recruit for governance competence, but are recruiting for business acumen, you are inviting managers to serve on the board. And so right there is the first problem with it, because that's what they know how to do. And if they're wow. not educated about what governance is and where that line is, it causes all sorts of trouble. And I see it numerous times. So here are some mm -hmm. of the principles I have. The CEO is not subordinate to the board. The mm -hmm. CEO does not report to the board chair. Mm -hmm. The CEO is the executive responsible for effective management. And the CEO is accountable to the board as a corporate unit. So it's the board's responsibility to hold the CEO, who is an executive and director, right? Executive director is to ask them good questions, even challenge the CEO at times and to be ever watchful for impropriety. Absolutely. But it, the boards need to learn how to work collaboratively and supportive in a supportive partnership with the CEO. As one of my good friends says, he says that the board is the big what the management is how, and that's mm -hmm. where you draw the line. I, I love that because I've heard that so many times that that the boss of the CEO is the board chair and and I love how you challenge that and I also love how you mentioned that we tend to find I think executives I see this all the time right a, a board is made up of executives and leaders and managers within a number of different businesses and they're used to managing and they carry that same thought process yeah. because I see yeah. One nonprofit I was working with recently, every um, check over two hundred fifty dollars, the the CEO <laughs> <Don't>, got approval. <laughs> yeah. I know. I mean, we can go on and on and on with the stories, and it's like yes. And, and I personally struggled a little bit with in in my role as an outsourced accounting firm, where the CEO doesn't want to deal with any of the accounting, so I have to deal with the finance oh. committee directly for all of the basic yeah. things like getting checks right. signed or and i find this oftentimes in, in faith-based communities frankly yeah. uh, even though they might have a board but oftentimes a lot of administrative functions that you think a ceo yes. or a lead pastor would be responsible for are often delegated to a committee yeah. which is the board and then you've just set yourself up for some struggle trouble there. yeah anyway, absolutely lots of stories yes <laughs> there into. are lots of stories